Hi, my name is Han, founder and CEO of Gina AI. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to speed up your Gina developer experience in PyCharm and VS Code IDE. In particular, I will show you how to enable IntelliSense for Gina's YAML configs on those IDEs. IntelliSense can provide code completion, showing member and arguments list, validating your YAML config. Those features can help you build your Gina application much faster. Gina is an easier way to develop new research on the cloud. I often call it TensorFlow for search. If you haven't tried Gina before, you can install Gina via PyPy and run Gina Hello demos to see examples on fashion image search, chatbot, and multimodality search. If you have installed Gina, you may want to make sure it is the latest version by using pip install minus u Gina. A typical Gina application contains two types of source files, Python code and YAML config. The Python file defines the entry point and the customized logics. The YAML config defines the flow composition and the configuration of each individual executor. Depending on the cases and the depth of customization, you can develop the project in both ways. In Gina, it is even possible to build a completely code-free project that only depends on the YAML config. Most IDEs have provided nice intelligence for Python development. Thanks to the straightforward APIs, type hints, and 100% docstring coverage in Gina framework, you can enjoy a pretty smooth development experience. However, for YAML config, it doesn't help so much besides simple code highlight. This could slow down your development speed as you have to navigate through the documentation code base in order to figure out which component or argument you really want to use. Now I'm going to show you how to enable IntelliSense for Gina YAML configs in PyCharm. If you are VS Code users, please jump to the later part of this video. First, open your PyCharm. Click on the menu and select Preference. In the left panel, search for JSON schema in the search box and select JSON schema mappings. Next, in the right panel, click plus icon and add a new schema. You can give it an aperture name, but here I will just call it Gina. In the schema URL, please write api.gina.ai slash schemas slash latest.json. This ensures that your schema is always up to date with the new release. You can also bound it to the specific Gina version or a pre-release version. Next in the schema version, please select version 7. Finally, I add two file path pattern mappings to associate any files that end with YAML or Gina.yaml extensions to the schema. Click OK to apply the change. If you are a Visual Studio Code user, you may first need to install YAML extension from the Red Hat. Click on the sidebar and select the extension. Search for YAML and then select YAML support from Red Hat and then install it. Now open your IDEWise settings.json, create a new entry called YAML.schemas. Under that entry, create a new mapping from api.gina.ai slash schemas slash latest.json to any files that end with YAML or gina.yaml. Finally, save your settings.json to apply the change. OK, now let's see it in action. Create a new hello.gina.yaml file, and you will see the IDE has successfully marked it as Gina file type. If it doesn't, you may want to manually select the schema you just created. Now type jtype in the first line, and you will see the IDE suggests you with flow or a list of executor that Gina contains. For old users of Gina, jtype is a synonym for the bound mark. We recommend you to use jtype over the bound mark as it gives a cross-platform compatible YAML file. Now the IDE immediately marks it as yellow as it is not a valid Gina config file. Hover your mouse on it and it complains you haven't defined the required field, version, and parts. Let's complete them. As you write, you will see the autocomplete kicks in to help you fill in the default values. You can hover your mouse on the field to see the help text. 
This help text is consistent with the documentation, so you don't have to look up from the doc again. You will also see the hint is based on the context. For example, when writing parts, it suggests all arguments that are accepted by the part. When you write something is unrecognizable by the schema, the IDE will mark it as yellow immediately. The intelligence becomes super helpful when you write an executor-level YAML file. Let's create a new YAML file for configuring NumPy indexer. You can see the IDE will keep only the arguments that are accepted by that executor. It also works on the nested level. When you define request.on, it shows only drivers. And when you define the drivers, it shows relevant arguments that are accepted by that driver. You can check out the doc string for any driver or executor by holding your mouse on it. Besides PyCharm and VS Code, most mainstream IDEs also support JSON schema. You can configure it manually. The actual user experience may slightly vary depending on your IDE or plugin. In general, our schema file enables code completion, syntax validation, argument filtering, filling default values, and displaying help text. I hope this episode can show you how to set up your dev environment for Gina and benefit from our schema file. If you want to know more about Gina, please follow us on GitHub, read the docs, and join our Slack channel. In the next episode, I will talk more about Gina APIs and its YAML syntax, so stay tuned and happy searching.